Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you, don't get up and just jot it down. Whether it is raining or not, if you have to cancel your job for that day, is it not when you are alive you go for work? If you get up and see dead people, where well, I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is dead calling you calling your children sit down allow the devil come and destroy you that's what happens to people they don't do anything about it and you see and because they don't act one day you find out that you just get up whereas it was concluded remember the book of job they were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily and in one day everything happened That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people. Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs. It can never say enough. This grave, it keeps opening. Hell had enlarged itself. Opens, receives people, finds young people, just when people are at the prime of their life that devil comes from wherever don't ever make death look like a mystery it is as predictable a spirit as sickness innocent people plan their lives i don't know why i started talking about this plan their lives and do all. do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life he can't make you leave god he can't make you this the next plot is to kill you whether or not you die in christ or not at least you are dissociated from your body it's still a plus for him make sure you insist that you are here for a long time there is work to be done give birth to children and before the ch children are still young you die and leave them and leave them in the hands of wicked people it's not to make you afraid it's to let you know that death can it has it attempts death is boastful he said oh death where is your victory it's important to go where you know God is you don't know when your word and your deliverance when 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 we say invite people it's not because a man of God is looking for fame somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it hallelujah death 
We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John. We're looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the the parameters for measuring spirituality like i've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom but then there is a dimension of it that i want to introduce to us tonight and is a dimension where christ is seated at the heart of every individual and I'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power that place is the place of authority that is the place where Satan death hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you there is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John chapter 2 and verse 15. A popular scripture here. I want us to examine it. Just listen to me carefully. First John chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me again, and I will bring laughter to her family. And I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter, the sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Please follow me carefully. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the lost thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality carnality is not um it's not necessarily a bad word it's just a description of a state please listen carefully when we say a man is carnal it's not supposed to be an insult are we together the bible says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system 
the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen he says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning it's a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three he says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the Holy Spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the Bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes 
and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar having built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come it's not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you David. this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen he's not going to ask you whether you believe in the old or new testament that that is nonsense jesus is not going to ask you all those things jesus is not going to ask you and say which part of the ten commandments did you keep or which lord or no 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 he's going to ask you one question just one question his emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart it's called christ's self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life brothers and sisters i don't care how many hours you pray i don't care how many bible study concordances you have i don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things ha, 
carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has through sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no side so won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system is god helping us when your life becomes christ-centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal jesus the revelation of jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center number three that any and all that you do becomes for his glory the Lord's Prayer for thine is the kingdom the power and glory thine is the kingdom I receive all of the blessings but yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory the Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard. Come David Dam why it is hard for many people to get the attention of god and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last friday can god trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what god gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say lord lift me up take me high and god says no way stop praying and say no god ask lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that god cannot give you what is in prosperity that god cannot give you mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but god is not a fool just because he said i will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes do you know the foundation for jealousy listen the foundation for envy backbiting and all of these things is one word self self 
self it is because i want to give a perception that i am a big man so if somebody calls me joshua selman i now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are it's like an an action film people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i will come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that will distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relay it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment 
I hope you like what I'm, pre I'm preaching. This is a deliverance message. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I watch, do you know, brothers and sisters, Kai, whatever God did to me, may he do it to you. Truly speaking, I say it with all humility. My life is a free life. I, am, I, will be, I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort. I think there is something about the sovereign power of God. Maybe it's an election of grace. He did it. But the moment, hold my hands, David. Huh? Another person come. Emeka, come. These are the luggages we carry. One other person. The ladies. I don't know how you are going to hold me. Find a way of holding. Come, 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 come. We're acting something here. Hold anybody. Come and hold my hand here. Come. Can they hold you? She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord. Because a broken, a broken uh, what, spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face. So this guy is carrying all this load. Do you think Satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting? Do you know how Satan ties them? He doesn't use a rope. He uses your heart. That's what is there. This is how to be spiritual. You come to a point where you say, Lord, I love you. But these things are occupying my heart. And Lord, I'm not irresponsible. But then you have to become Lord of my life genuinely. I am too attached. I can't sleep. I sleep for one hour per day because I'm thinking about money. A man can have nothing except it is given. And you let go the issue of the job. The devil will now deceive you and say, you better be responsible. If you don't think about it, it won't come. And he said, no. Jesus, I hand it over to you. Hallelujah. This is the way of the cross. You are getting free. You too, you are strange because you are now feeling lighter. Ah, ah. Now, all of a sudden, you could pray. Before you go to pray, after five minutes, you stop praying on your own and you are thinking. But now you could stretch for one hour, two hours. You are becoming lighter. And then all of a sudden, this one is a lady. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman. It can mean anybody. It doesn't have to be a lady or a, a, whatever. Lord Jesus, I must make it happen my way. And God is saying you will wear yourself to death. Lord, age is not on my side. Is it that you are not seeing? And God is saying, I am Lord of all. If I don't give you anything, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. And he said, Lord, I've been looking at this lady's picture. I can't even pray. And God says, I will, if you think I'm going to talk to you about that lady, you are joking. You better talk to me. Leave this lady and say, God, I want to. But this lady, she has become an idol. Maybe the lady, yes, it's true. That's the name. It's called idolatry. Let's call it what it is. She has become an idol. Not because she's bad. Are you getting what I'm saying now? But because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with God. So God is going to say lay it down. Lay it down does not mean leave her. Lay it down means be willing to leave her. Hi. And you say, oh God, no now. How can I leave this guy? This is my 11th relationship. And while you are talking all that nonsense, God doesn't say anything. He allows you. Then... You now cry, cry one night, lie down, roll, and let it go. Your spiritual life. You notice that the moment you surrender, something lives in you. The more you die, you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down. You see that? Love not the world. Love not the world. This one is ministry. No, I must shine. My colleagues started ministry before me, and I mean, I must do ministry. This, this is a lot of, especially some of us that have the grace of God upon our lives. No, I must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is. And God says, Look, calm down. For three months, you are not holding any meeting. I said, God, my whole reputation was on this small fellowship. Now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again. God said, That's exactly what I was trying to show you. 
it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne and god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all this all these these things we do are proofs of carnality I was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we are saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you Many people never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and god says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir oh i'm so blessed hearing this message myself are we together I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you I'm trusting you to get married. And Lord says, all right, I will direct you. Say, no, Lord, this is, this is the lady. This is the guy I must marry. If you are the one, it must be this. And God says, that's not the way it works. Thy will be done. It is for your glory. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. I give you all the praise. That's a spiritual man. Lord, this is the business I want to do. I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. That's the language of spiritual people. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. No. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life, your ministry, and all that concerns you. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. Born this into your spirit. You cannot have Naira and Kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you. You cannot have any idea until he gives to you. You can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle. That's why we don't give. You count offering and count five Naira. You ate puff puff one thousand. Took another drink. 
1,000 or wine. Are we together now? And then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira. And you are smiling now. All shall wait and God is looking at your heart. Look what Jesus did in the church. He came and stood and saw what people were giving. It was a reflection of their attachment. It wasn't the money. He saw a woman who had all. Do you know why Jesus was touched? Because she really didn't know who he was. If she had known him, it would be hypocrisy because he was there. She just came. That means she was doing it unsupervised. It was what she would do. Whoever this God is of the Hebrews, I love him. And I lay down everything. Love not the world. This is the problem of many people's destinies. Attachment. Attachment to money. God gave you a car. All of a sudden, you carry that car and put it in your heart. The garage is not enough for it. How can you have a garage for a car and, not, and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars. And then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's when you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your document, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, you would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you gather the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15 please give us verse 11 I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing the story of the prodigal son for many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons Two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selma was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that's self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do lord i'm tired of waiting on you for this power give me this thing so that i can do it anyhow i want on stage why must i wait for you and worship before you come don't you know that is falling my hand after clapping for me and giving me water i come and stand on the stage and i say lord you have to come whereas people on my is my t-shirt they are wearing with my face not your face so lord give me this power so that i can operate it independent of you prodigal son he didn't want it he wanted it in his name meaning his control the father said all right everyone that asked it receive it now watch this he says and not many days after the younger son gathered all together he took on his journey are you seeing he did not want submission uh -uh. 
a self-centered life wants to be the lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living he says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have seen against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring it at the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see it there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry scene two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what is, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he want he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing 
Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher, be lifted higher. Listen. So there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say, no, it's westernization. Because you will know that everything God gives you, he demands that you act as though it's his own. God never gives us ownership. Owners are rebels in this kingdom. We are stewards of everything. His resources, mysteries, whatever it is. It belongs to him. It only passes through me. So brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire. Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. Your spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? Does your bank account belong to him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to him now? Does your wife belong to him? Does your husband belong to him? Does whoever you are in a relationship with, does it belong to him? Do your children belong to him? Or they are his property? You are only a steward over them. Does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him? Or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, 
ladder of greatness ah far be it from me too young for that kind of stress don't let me have it let everything i have be from you please don't let me have it for everything i need is in you listen this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone he was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does but I am so sometimes I just look and I say Lord Kai someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said oh please send me your account number and I just as I was ending the call the spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for you know why God can speak to me like that because my life the account and the favor is his own I was so happy when he said it not just as a law for abundance it's with all pleasure my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised you're my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised hear the word of the Lord tonight Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles he is the opener of the door he is the lifter of men you have separated your ego from these things if it happens well for you glory be to God if it does not happen well to you Lord be praised if the child comes Lord I thank you for the testimony if the child does not come Lord while I wait I still love you that's one who is Christ centered listen that's a spiritual man that's a spiritual God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self, flesh. The lady must be this beautiful figure eight. The guy must be this, a millionaire must be this. And people keep jam-packing rubbish and trouble into their lives. How about people who don't even... Gone are the days, this issue of hearing God. People have eroded it. You just get up and say, I want to go to Abelkuta because there's green pastures there. How about brothers and sisters? Let's respect and fear God. There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have for everything I need is in you. Listen, we're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. 
Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry. Trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are empty. I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say, life. What a terrible life. How can this ministry grow? How can this ministry grow? Oh Lord, do this. this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the show of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness. And let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying. But there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They would take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. He was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy, I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years. They love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say, look, just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says, you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark. And you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things clothes shoe 
they are wonderful god will give you more than your wildest imagination brothers let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show i am rich so that all and sundry will respect you is all nonsense if you are great you are great honor is a mantle if you don't have it you don't have it. it's as simple as that tonight is a night of thorough repentance we are going to cry before god and confess the idolatry the sin the carnality of idolatry to say lord i've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me i hand it over there is peace in handing over your life to god there is peace in handing over your children to god there is peace in handing over your job hand over the difficult boss don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50 50 agreed and you are in trouble now allow god who would do it 100 zero he will give you bless you we commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching we came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just you know see the pastors and and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that sir I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you and then I'm looking and say, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this, please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back and I think day before yesterday or so, it's still called the protocol. The church has said, somebody has given a post to the cow. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we now? February, car, it must come. And God is saying, Hapa, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Say, Matthew chapter 1. God, I've been crying. I've been saying, can God is saying, look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He would take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You walk it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives. These battles are not even there. They were created by our lust. Sister, let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you. I will serve your house and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze. There's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around. What of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job 
equal to an estate this is God this is God whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering we are going to pray tonight the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest the spirit life demands that our desires listen our appetites our ambitions our aspirations come under submission to his will this is all God is asking I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife did you hear what they said they had been trusting God for a baby boy are you seeing that but notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony the first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order and then without any effort as it were a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart some of you as you are singing it God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything say take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything use all of me use all of me all of me Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything, take my everything, I release my everything. You have my everything, say all of me, all of me. Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Father, take away the idol that sits in my heart, attempting to take your place. Lift your voice and cry. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, O oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. Remove everything 
every lust that I'm so attached to every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord and throw hallelujah prayer point number two mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the lordship of Jesus mention it whatever God has done and given you mention it by name and bring it under the lordship of Jesus the marriage you gave me I bring it under the lordship of Jesus the children you have given me they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace I rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me I hand it over to you the relationship you gave me I hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me Lord you are the one who gave me the prayer group the church the business I'm tired of struggling by my strength bring me rest bring me rest the rest that only you can bring teaching enter your spirit and you will watch your life like a charm favor open doors I tell you the Bible says behold I and the children whom who gave you who gave you is God that gives increase I and the children the Lord had given me are for signs 
and for wonders in Zaria, in Nigeria, in Israel. But where did the signs and wonders come from? From the Lord of hosts. I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare, pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders, for signs, financial signs and wonders, supernatural signs and wonders. Dimensions of revelations, dimensions of encounters, dimensions of increase, dimensions of influence, dimensions of prayer grace, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Spiritual men, kingdom-minded people, Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. is becoming a testimony of your power a testimony of your grace a testimony of your wisdom lift your voice and pray I declare it my life is a sign and a wonder a testimony of your power a testimony of your goodness a testimony of your glory
I decree and declare my life is a testimony Hallelujah. Isaiah 62. Let's keep standing. Isaiah chapter 62. We'll read the first seven verses. And if I were you, I would believe everything we're about to read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. It says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of God. A royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Mm. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah and thy land Beulah for the Lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. He says, Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Seven, he says, And give him no rest till he establish and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Lift your voice and say, Father, I declare my life must become a testimony i place a demand upon your grace i place a demand upon your power pray Give him no rest till he establishes you. Give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the earth. Shabarakatu Sabradishnara. Lord, we believe your word. We continue to press. We continue to press until we become testaments. hallelujah one last prayer point and then you'll be seated lord my spirit and my mind is open not just your spirit my spirit man and my mind is open lift your voice and pray i receive illumination are you praying outside are you praying my spirit is open my mind is open Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Spirit of the living God, we are here again 
and we trust the supply of your power we receive spiritual intelligence we receive illumination the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered therefore lord we declare by the power of the holy spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other and tonight oh god our hearts and our minds are opened in the name of jesus christ good evening everybody it matters to god that we grow it doesn't just matter to god alone that we are saved the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ listen very carefully the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ your spirit your mind your physical body your life the entire three realms in the realm of the spirit the realm of your mind and even in the physical the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of christ if one or more of these realms um does not successfully communicate the victory of christ you are going to limit the presentation of the power the victory the reality of the victory of christ will not find full expression in our lives therefore we must continue to press listen carefully to make sure that christ is a contention and is a journey to make sure that christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives in the realm of the spirit you are sound spiritually you are growing you are conforming to the image the character of the christ are we together your life is becoming a representation of god you are hosting very superior dimensions of his presence then your mind is enlightened you are sustaining an understanding that is higher far higher than the intelligence of the average human being and then your physical environment all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in christ you are only fruitful in your christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates in revealing the victory of christ if i am sound spiritually and i am anointed but then my mind is barren and unfruitful there is a dimension of god that my life will never be able to present are we together now yes if i am wealthy and i am influential and i have a healthy mind but my spirit is dead there is a dimension of god i will never be able to communicate The lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of Christ through a man, what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness, is the reason why there's a lot of unfulfillment in our Christian experience. So it's as though you should select one area where you want Christ to be revealed. And some selected finances, some selected intelligence, some selected spiritual health some selected influence some selected career and so everybody just selects and god says no i will never be revealed holy like that the entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him if you're with me say amen, amen. so the assignment in building you by the spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by his grace no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful are we together i have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the spirit of god through these teachings is very clear there is a picture already we are not guessing what we will be like are we together the bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like 
but then christ has already exemplified all that we should become so we continue as we behold him as in a mirror the bible says there is a change a metamorphosis like an insect transits from egg lava pupa to the adult that's what is happening to us so never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed don't worry your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder working power of the spirit a woman's assignment is to be pregnant the dynamics of the growth of the child leave it to god every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach whether she can feel it or not and then at a point she starts sensing that look this child is becoming real and then nine months later she gives birth to a healthy baby imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering what part of him is growing now is it the leg or the head you are going to stress yourself a system has already been designed in you when your part is played god's part kicks in immediately so it's not everything that you need to know there are things that you need to know you don't need to know everything but the part you should know if you don't know it it will make god look unfruitful in your life hallelujah as we prepare for our retreat i'm very excited about the weekend because for for us it's a time it's a time when our lives will never never be the same i really believe it's the first time we're having two day stretch retreat usually one day will be for the leaders and then everybody but the kind of information you're about to receive cannot be passed in one day you need to sit down and get this thing i prayed to god and i prayed for you i said lord they must get it they must get it when you get it it shows he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can doubt what you hear sometimes you can even doubt what you see but what your hands have handled now it's too real to doubt it hallelujah praise the lord tonight's teaching is a response um many times i'm led by the spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the spirit or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation it may just be that when i i examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages and once i find out that a people continually need clarity over certain aspects then i know that it's a sign that i should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment and i think that recently one of the areas that i would say a lot of people have had it's, it's a growing frustration is why the victory in christ the success that the bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge partnership with the holy spirit and obedience what is really hindering the manifestation listen tonight's teaching is very powerful very very powerful because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the spirit ephesians chapter one the bible says blessed be the god of our father you know our lord and father jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we're not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are blessed everybody say i am blessed that is a fact the bible declares it number two the bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings are we together now and the bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context 
when the bible tells you a thing is spiritual that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence it is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm listen very carefully and then number three the bible says it is in heavenly places that is where these realities are domiciled now follow me very carefully so we are blessed with all blessings how many all blessings all blessings this is the revelation of what grace is grace is any and everything only god can produce it's not just unmerited access any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the christ and in the christ is called grace anointing is grace the wisdom of god is grace the peace that surpasses all understanding is grace are we together righteousness is grace mercy is grace every constituent that only the christ can produce is called grace please listen you have to understand this i define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above so spiritual blessings from above heavenly places but routed only in christ now the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in christ an angel cannot be the basis for grace are we together now yes christ is the epicenter listen carefully now grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly that means if grace cannot if that reality is not captured in the christ you don't there's no point seeking it it's not available so before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and walking in any reality your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of god has made that reality available and the way you know is to find out whether the christ his person jesus the door does he lead you to that possibility jesus said i am the way i am the truth i am life he said many things about himself he also said i am the door not just the good shepherd not just the bread are we together now so the grace of god is the basis for availability of anything the grace of god has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed that is why we can press for the anointing the grace of god makes his prosperity available the grace of god makes his righteousness available listen the grace of god makes access into the mind of god access into the gifts of the spirit available this is the correct and balanced communication of grace so you approach the grace of god as a summation the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the christ can provide you cannot route the grace of god through any other formula that does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula you can but if it must be by grace it has to be in christ <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed listen we just finished a series on spiritual stability and the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending meaning if anyone gets up now no matter how well meaning and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in christ you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen i hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say i am a spirit not i have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit 
are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment that's why god made man from the elements of the earth when bible says god made man from the dust is a generic statement it doesn't mean god used mud it means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements so you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation for instance the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks that's why they don't decay a man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years just like a rock can remain you see the hair of man you see it in the similitude of grass you can cut grass it can grow back your hair so it means god made man he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment that's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he is the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body is a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you you don't see with your eyes <laughs> look at this shut down a man's brain keep his eyes open will he be seen you see through your eyes you see your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through but what processes that image is not this that's why if you read in the book of acts paul was blind yet he was still seeing visions that's why blind people can still be productive because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes is the mind Are we together now so the bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that as you've always heard me say it here once it is true that we do not seek god because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i design something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it 
are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life everything may not yet experientially be manifest but there should be what i call a token a consolation something that motivates you that i got it right okay i started five years ago praying in tongues one hour every day reading my bible five chapters every day reading my moon rose book after five years i should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life it encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest i'm getting there but when your life becomes ichabod that everything at all spiritually even if there's nothing materially let there be spiritual intelligence let there be the anointing praying one hour every day for five years to the same god of heaven and not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together when you start working with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone 
the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstruct your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when it dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says is full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws never allow your personal frustration i know this is very painful you are you are far from receiving the help of god when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and god from it and say lord as far as i'm concerned i'm doing what should be done why are things not working no many times the mistake is never from god a gentleman sent me a text today probably he's following and he was going to commit suicide by this night i don't mean this play play i will kill myself he really was going to do it there's how you know that somebody means business with suicide the kind of dreams he's having the, somebody cannot just wake up and say i want to kill myself he's just looking for help but there, there are things that can lead to you know that this person will actually kill himself and i was telling him i said no no you don't have to kill yourself and the person says usually this is it i have done everything i know to do or i have done everything koinonia teaching says to do or i have done everything my pastor or the word of god says to do i'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and i hope it doesn't offend you if it does not work you are missing something the systems of the kingdom are so flawless if you really get it your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come now this is an, an uncomfortable truth but i want us to please for god's sake humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention that if something is not working in my life and your life there is something you know have you seen a learner learning how to drive and then the learner is surprised why is this car moving that way i thought you said i should talk i'm doing my best he thinks based on his mind that he's doing his best but the professional knows what is wrong and the learner will argue and say this and that and that no i don't 
I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts, a school of ministry students, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for in for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly, and I'm the one that is doing the marking from a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. <laughs> now, but you ask the person who wrote it. I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person just because he read and just because he wrote. You can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five. But your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want by the grace of God, I think for many of us, I know what is wrong. And I want to show you this night and I want you to listen because i'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened so what is wrong you will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having i had it too because i believe with all my heart that i was getting everything right but looking from today's standpoint <laughs> it was a joke i even wonder how i can see the gaps that the mercy of god covered outstanding success has a huge price write it down for someone this is already a deliverance because you believe that success just because the bible says he has given us all things just because the bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in christ that word if not well explained can mislead you and make you fail now the bible is saying i have been given all things if i have been given it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive and you are not wrong but the system of reception is every other thing i will be saying for many people we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith i receive you see it now but that's incomplete the same way the system of god giving you this you, you see the bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions and so when you are interpreting scripture you have to first understand the context what was the subject matter that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in paul's context his exegesis on redemption he does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done so he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory and that is correct with respect to your understanding of redemptive realities but now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom and paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you 
why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a jimmy's wife is a professional baker the word mix doesn't mean to talk it means it involves action it involves process when you mix something you combine factors together and the bible said not mix with faith faith is part of the many things that should be mixed not mixed with faith like you say you didn't add salt to the food the food is not salt there were many other things before salt arrived but for the taste you are looking for salt is the ingredient that must be added not mixed with faith in them that heard it and so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives success has a huge price it truly is very costly the earlier you got this the better for you settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful number two like i will always say failure too has a huge price tag many people don't know that it's not easy to fail they think it's very easy to fail if there is a price to produce the results that we need what is that price i'm not going to be talking of many of them i'm just going to mention one that i believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence write it down and listen very carefully please don't assume you understand what i'm saying the price of diligence proverbs 14 verse 23 read it for me if you are a serious christian one two read please but the talk of the lips only does what in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury there is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor requires diligence diligence is a trait that all successful people whether in ministry in business have many believers are busy many believers are taking action but they are not diligent write this down diligence is the quality of being productive write it down diligence is the quality of being strategic diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa 
I don't know if it's a social cultural context, but we have a very funny understanding about success. We have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves. But I think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that God or government or parents or mother nature owes us our being successful. Or we just feel, I may just put my hands here and there and then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you are a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Anytime an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's it? 15th? Now they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event, people started having time for them and resources started coming to them. Now that the event has been achieved, nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it. Listen, listen. By 1990, there was no time for Zuckerberg. There was no time for Facebook because that product was not created. There was no event that will make you have time for Facebook. So a gentleman said, let me make men have time. And with that time will come resources. And he made available an event. And now we have time for Facebook. There was no time for Koinonia. Before Koinonia started, your Friday night were for something else. The moment there was a vision, that vision brought time to it. And with that time, every resource came. Is that true? So when you say time is money, time is not necessarily directly money. Time is only money when an event, a creativity was added and attached to that time. It will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources. So when you pay Zuckerberg, you are not paying him for the product necessarily. You are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing. Are we together now? Now you all have time for browsing. Once upon a time, you could not do that on your phone. Somebody made that possibility. With that time now goes your data. Your data will finish and you want to invest in. When you pay data, what are you really paying? Think well. What are you paying? Time. 
when you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000 what did you pay for if they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working what are you really paying for if you take away time on earth nobody will pay anybody for anything again are you getting what i'm saying now so there is an event and then men begin to invest in this and now they are married god bless you thank you ask him what it took to create that time <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence it is not i said that's my message <laughs> now but is he married or not please talk you are laughing but i hope you understand what i'm saying is he married or not did the devil stop it but it is not 24 hours to your wedding there's no reception oh god take my shame that's 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 labor there it's labor in prayer and faith it's not just an activity in all labor there is profit <laughs> goodness it takes diligence please sit down sit down pastor if you are not diligent listen very carefully my brothers and my sisters there is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence there are many many men of god for instance i was listening to bishop oedeko's um, lecture at at benson idahosa the university there commemorating um, mama idahosa's birthday and i mean that that great man of god at that age was just crying out his life many people believe life is so cheap they just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor they believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence many of us here the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent diligence does not mean you are not moving you are not moving strategically you are just busy around trying to hustle what business are you doing oh yeah let me join now what are you doing let me just apply i will apply everywhere by faith you believe that what you are doing uh -uh. let me show you something luke chapter 14 please let's read two verses 28 and 29 I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost whether you have sufficient to not start it finish it you can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start otherwise the bible will not talk about it here you can know that i have capacity to finish this vision next verse less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him in fact let's let's read the next verse saying this man began to build continue till i ask you to stop and was not able to finish remember we're talking of completion here finishing next verse or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Are we together? That you become strategic about your life. Not just to take action. 
many young people pray in tongues they fast dry as soon as they are done they just get up just because the holy spirit told them do a and b they just get up foolishly they, there is no they, they don't have that strategic approach to life a man comes with his wife look at this you are married to your wife and you are acting as if how will the finances be run the spirit god is faithful is he not in this life you are not diligent let's pray wonderful but you are not diligent there is no planning there is no strategic approach are we together you have real issues that need to be dealt with but you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything faith is not foolishness you are sitting down let me show you diligence how much do we have now Twenty thousand per month how much do you need two hundred thousand per month we are we are far from the goal but at least we are aware of what we have the miracle comes when you know what you have first remember what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle are we together yes if you have twenty thousand naira in your house and you are a pastor that means there's no organizing conference <laughs> There's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision. We are not diligent and we are not strategic. How many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's God that did it and they web themselves in a lot of shame and reproach. You borrow one million, invite five men of God who come for four now you think that just because it is spiritual you are not strategic about your life you will never prosper and you will not do well that way are we together a man is starting a ministry and all no members there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying hundred thousand per month or per week believers if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised that your life is not making progress a tongue-talking born-again believer is receiving salary of fifty thousand. you will find him in zaria suya spot he will buy five chicken one for apostle what you think just because you are buying for apostle means you are you are not diligent if one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five fifteen thousand what percentage of your salary is that all of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days they'll say ah sorry you i didn't for where's the pta letter you are not diligent it's not about having money or not having money the same way people come to church when they now say time for offering they are surprised you are not diligent you are not strategic about your life you just stand and guess while the offering is coming quickly you just touch your pocket bring out everything and drop it you are not intentional about life i tell you why many things are not working for us we are praying we are happy but we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be gone. I have prayed, I have fasted, but I took out time, the entire retreat. I'm not just going as the spirit leads. There is something intentional to be inculcated in the people. And because of that, it demanded two days. It's not God that told me two days. The wisdom of the world and the level of investment I seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training. The first dimension of being diligent is not hard work, it's being strategic. Being strategic helps your energy to be worth it. Many of us are dissipating energy, but we are shadow boxing. Apostle, it's not like I'm sitting down, I'm moving, I'm doing something. What are you doing? Have you thought about what you are doing? There are people who can start 10 businesses in one month. It's a sign that they are not diligent. They were not strategic over what they are doing. I just want to do something. I want to get my hand doing something. You are just hard working. You are not diligent. 
a diligent person will sit down you will look at your lifestyle you will look at your goals and your vision you will look at what capital you have the knowledge the level of knowledge you have you look at that business relative to your service relative to your life as a workforce person you look at every other factor how long do i want to do this business is it just to help me get capital for something bigger or this is a line of interest i seek to pursue there's no diligence that's why there is no sustainability in the things we do we just jump at whatever we hear is happening and do you know let me tell you this when you when you continue failing for a long time you will stop believing yourself I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people, but they come to me and say, Apostle, what, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me, as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fast in itself is, is but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing and the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice and the person is saying i thought this thing comes by it and you are saying no let me tell you what you are doing wrong i will not become your member there are many things you don't know you are not diligent the man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members he's not planned it ask him have you done your homework to one those members he says i can preach by the grace of god i'm anointed i'm a mighty prophet i'm an apostle of god is that all it takes to run a church are you seeing that now a lot has not happened we ignore all of these things and then he sees and says oh one day we will take the nations in the name of jesus according to my vision i saw doors opening uh-huh what do you think will happen so we just sit down feel like uh let's do a conference light and glory prophetic encounter season one you start now i'm not being sarcastic you just sat down and thought okay what is this conference supposed to do to my members what is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level relative to the level of ministry relative to our finances i'm bringing one guest minister from ghana I'm bringing one guest minister from London. I'm adding Apostle Joshua Selman from it. What is your budget for the conference? Two million. What is your entire church offering for a year? 500,000. God is faithful. You see that? That is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever. I don't care what kind of tongues he prays. There are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house. You see it in their life show me your notebook under god that i know that i'm in one small room but i'm already planning and these are the steps i am being strategic let me tell you this i stand before the god of heaven come ejimi be my witness there is nothing you see being done in koinonia today that i did not say will happen he will tell you nothing absolutely nothing I can bring notebooks for you and show you where I wrote these things and I wrote everything that will be done when koinonia was going to start I told you that I saw CGC bigger than this it was small but I saw it expand it's not just vision so we began to prepare when the Lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things I sat down I said it takes a lot I studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world it's not just prayer and fasting alone you have to be strategic at a particular level of ministry that i get to i may not be outside on a bike again somebody will embarrass me will i have the financial level at that time to at least have a car what if koinonia needs to run gen 24 hours these are things thank you sir thank you so much these are things that many people never plan for you just sit down and say let's have another baby and god is watching you say you you i did you hear yourself let's have another baby 
you see nigerians and africa we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of god because we are not strategic the baby comes and the man does not know what to do they are confused and he's angry you are the stupid woman why didn't you advise me when i said let's have a baby say is it my fault and, and all of, and the baby who is innocent there is watching and saying well, so what is, what is going on now what are you going to do with me if i ask many of you here my dear brothers and sisters don't stand up but if i say how many of you are in ministry not will be in ministry are in some kind of ministry many people will stand up and i look at you if i say after 10 years many people will be struggling they will get angry they'll say apostle is proud he's talking nonsense he's being stupid but i said this thing years ago that many ministries will struggle in the future because i saw by the spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require and i said lord i don't want to be stupid i want you to show me what are the systems that will take to excel and god said if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price I will show you when I was saying some of these things people laughed at me others insulted me others said a lot of things it's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the squallow of ignorance God is the builder of all but let me tell you every house is built by someone yes diligence involves being strategic you have to sit down and plan in the name of jesus god is faithful but i have to plan what is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the holy ghost in koinonia it's not enough to be anointed imagine that you did not put that system in place a time will come half of your members are not filled with the holy ghost my god that is some that is some some babylon in your church when half of the members are not filled with the holy ghost you are in trouble already what is the system in place for all of this is part of being diligent number two diligence involves sacrifice mm. many of us miss it in this area sacrifice is a non-negotiable price if you want to ever be great the sacrifice of prayer the sacrifice of prayer you see the sacrifice of fasting the sacrifice of staying till you understand the word of god god is my witness whom i serve i don't know how many hours i've slept from yesterday till today and it's going to be a marathon into the week just going don't get me wrong i rest but every man knows uneasy lies the head that wears the crown you see that while you are sleeping and praying oh god bless these people in this retreat open their eyes let koinonia service today be powerful bring the people let there be miracles let there be signs let there be wonders my brothers and my sisters no matter what god has given you the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with it will cost you we are a generation that likes comfort too much why a generation that likes pleasure too much why a generation that is so averse to sacrifice the moment you have to constrain yourself a little we complain and shout and ramble yet if you see the kind of results we want it takes it takes a lot of sacrifice take sacrifice someone sent me a text and said apostle why are you not responding to me I've been calling you and you are not responding what is this and I just look I said this this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that I get every day and the things that I have to do I was counseling people yesterday counseling people in Lagos I already knew I was going to miss my flight 
I told this my people, I said, you guys should just go to the airport. I'll find my way. Just go. I knew I was going to miss my flight. But the people that I was, it was a strategic counseling. And I said, no, no, no. Let me miss the flight. You just go. And they went. As soon as we're done, I went to the airport, got the next flight that could come to Abuja. Instead of just flying down to Kaduna and coming to rest, I had, because of sacrifice, I routed down to Abuja and then from there now, from the airport back, I arrived in the night. As soon as I arrived, I just went, refreshed myself and went to work immediately. Apostle Joshua Selman. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, we are proud of you. We saw that in Lagos, they gave you an award. I said, don't look at the award. Look at the hands that collected that award. The sacrifice. We like pleasure. We like clapping. But the inner price. The price. Apostle, what do you do that people are just blessed like this? What do you do that the anointing, you are just talking and people are jumping up and down? My brother and my sister, it's not a charm. It's a price. Even a charm has a price. My police will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic. Do you know how much you are going to pay? It's a price. I can't remember the last time in my life I watched a movie. I have television but it's off i can't remember the last time the tv in my room was on honestly sincerely why did you buy it then i must enjoy you it's my money then you will never become anything in life there is a huge price please young people listen being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless you must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing it's a combination of many factors including a track record of consistency every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough there must be predictability to your destiny and your vision your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you otherwise they'll come and receive miracles and just go away human beings are not stupid they are first human beings before members of any church. Sacrifice. Say, so I receive grace to be sacrificial. Mm. Sacrifice. When you carry the money, you should buy a book with and read. And you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of 100,000. You allow a luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of hundred thousand to prove a point you are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness let me tell you it's not just when you have you spend there are times that a door can be open but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come it's not every open door that means god has licensed you to pass the door does not have to be closed to know it's not time it can be open but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing is god speaking to us sacrifice many of us are comfortable with little results that's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters men of god around this nation and the world they never go far they start small small signs and wonders small membership small miracles small testimony and you know that arrival mentality i look at myself and say apostle you've not started though you've not started at all you never come to my house i have received so many awards you never come to my house and see one picture that I snap with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency, you will not find one. I don't trust them. They are deceptive. You won't find any award on my table. With this he received award from this one. This one he met with this governor. This one he met with this. You, it's not Joshua Selman. Those things are deceptive. I push them. What you find is my future on my table, not my past. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. I wanna run over. 
I get hundreds of text messages every day. Apostle, you are a sign and wonder. The apostle of our time. Great man. There is a testimony. Apostle, we've been trusting God for a child for eight years. Remember, you spoke to us. Now the child has come. Apostle, let me have your account number. We want to be sending this and that. And sometimes I put my phone in front of me like this and I look at it. I said, Lord, deliver me from deception and complacency. Deliver me. Compared to where we are going, this is only a step out of the cave. There are still lands to conquer. There are still territories. What have we seen that we brag about? There are deep things in the spirit. When you have an arrival mentality, you will never see the need to, sacri to sacrifice. In this kingdom, you don't arrive. Oh. You don't arrive. All those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when God is moving. Is God speaking to us? Many of us here are not willing to sacrifice. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed. Show me what you are willing to sacrifice. Apostle, I like movie. I'm like that. We are all we are in our family. It's a gift. It's not a gift. It's an appetite you have refused to curb. It can be a gift, even if you are called into the movie industry. It takes diligence to sit down and plan. Can be a gift. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Some of us need to trust God for grace. To off that laptop. Off that phone. Off that television. And say television. I'm tired of watching other people fulfill their assignment. I'm ready to sit down. Lord you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry. I open my Bible, not TV. There is a time to watch TV. But in the name of Jesus, I sit down. When others are sleeping, you wake up. Your eye wants to close. They don't try it. Don't try it. I'm going far. Jacos kapatakata. Lord, open my eyes. And you are hearing one message. You are about to rest more. There's another worship backing you up. Then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit. Because you are preparing for an extraordinary life. Men of God, there is no shortcut to this thing. Let's not mock God. There is no shortcut. That blood must really flow. The way to the throne is the cross. There is no other way. Hallelujah. And you sit down. The, 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 the sacrificial dimension of diligence. There are times that God will demand from you. I have 10,000. That's all I have. And God says, carry it and give me. And he sit and say, God, no. You are, uh, if you are really God, your mercies endure. You are new every morning. All those statements of unbelief. You carry that thing by faith and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, let me be stupid for you. Let me tell you this. Show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain. I show you a man that Satan cannot do anything about when you when you master pain and it no longer touches you the devil will put his hand on his head and say what do i do with this person because pain is his edge in your life the moment you are uncomfortable you run away from that thing the cave you fear holds the miracle you look for that cave the cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there you must trust god for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard eyes closed and say lord if i perish i perish is god speaking to us yes say sacrifice say it shout sacrifice the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your energy many of you see what god is doing through this ministry did you know that sometimes as early as six or seven in the morning the workers are already at work you see this guy standing the worship team is behind me male and female no difference when you are in the worship team they are standing there so when you hear me raise a song and they are singing it's not robots human beings behind everything that works is a man making it work behind everything that works if you eat a delicious meal someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it 
if your clothes is nice someone paid the price to iron it please let us settle it once and for all nothing just happens if you are fed spiritually at the back of that revelation is someone's sacrifice we devalue the sacrifices of men in nigeria you look at young people talking about men of god and they have zero revelation zero result zero discipline zero vision yet they sit down tear men of god they talk about men of god this guy is more anointed than this this one is more sound ah that other guy in uh, in, in ghana oh have you seen the one in this oh and they sit down and analyze any day you see sacrifice don't pretend you didn't see it stop by and salute it even if you are in a hurry the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice please don't pass and ignore it stop and say i salute the investment of god upon your sacrifice it's the reason why when we finish service we allow our elderly ones to sit down it's not just because of favoritism the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of life the precious workers in this ministry some of them have been working since morning some of them will only go back early in the morning and some of them by by early in the morning they are going to start their work sacrifice the koinonia you are getting blessed by many of you when i mention a scripture you see it here at the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well what do you want in life are you willing to pay the price or are you willing to let the price be paid for you no say i receive grace to be sacrificial one more time say i receive grace show me a man of god that will sacrifice in prayer that will sacrifice in mentorship that will sacrifice in the word whose heart is open to understand the systems of god my brother and my sister i show you a man of god that no devil no power no cause no charm in existence can stop show me a man who is willing to settle down and understand god's financial systems and pay the price i show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable i show you a man who will never beg never beg never beg something happened when we were traveling to lagos very humorous story let me just say it. i got into the plane and then i saw i saw a couple and their mother they were shouting apostle i said these people have come to embarrass me now and they were happy and then when we got down the mother came and hugged me said she has been listening to my message my son let's snap and we're snapping and the mother just squeezed some money i said mama don't do this i don't know you i'm saying you, you must collect you and i said ah this is somebody's salary and somebody is saying you must collect the key is not anointing is value value if you are not valuable no mama will stand behind you a a wise son makes a glad father a foolish son is a reproach to his mother nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing let me tell you the truth i'm being hard on us i love you our retreat has started workers value stop packaging faking lying settle down and say in jesus name i must get this thing stop looking for money and trust god to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable they were carrying my luggage and then i sat down somewhere at the airport and the next thing i saw some group of boys i know how people look at me i just know that they're about to embarrass me again they came and said apostle ha ah, jesus this and that and that I was sad because I missed my flight. I was on my way to pick another flight to come back. And then I get into the plane and I see someone looking at me. Apostle. And he shouted, Jesus. I quietly went and I sat down. There was a space between me and the next person. True story. Yesterday, the guy got up and left his workmate and came to me. That he wants, I said, No, you want to embarrass me here. We started creating a scene. And you know how people in the plane got, ah, they were happy. The guy said, I'm not going. He wanted to kneel down there. I said, What is all this now? 
ah, this is a, a flight that is taking us the guy said he must sit down close to me i said okay he sat down close to me when everything was done i didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money he works in abuja and he just carried that i said no 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 i won't collect i will just bless you and i said once upon a time in my life this is what i needed to eat dinner and jesus was still lord if you are not valuable nobody will reward you my brothers and my sisters success is not a charm if you are not valuable nobody will reward you stop making demand of from life when you are not giving anything back it's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back so after you he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare the warfare is not just fighting demons you are wrestling with prophecy in the name of jesus a word has come that god is my ebenezer to help you means you are doing something lord I'm, I'm i'm going to settle down and take my life seriously why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing it's like a stench from my life driving them why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry something is wrong value i don't share these testimonies to brag i told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said please do you know apostle he said yes he said i'm going to transfer money to you send it to him for me the thing paying the man of god he called me and said apostle what is this somebody doesn't know you and knows me then now sends money to my account and say i should transfer it to you i just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed he's my very good friend value you can make up your mind and say in the name of jesus i will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year and then when you are prophesied like that you carry your spirit your head your mind into the room where the spirit of god breaks upon people and you say lord there has to be a way there has to be a way i can tell you this my brothers and my sisters when you mean business the gate of destiny must open the reason why many of us have not forced that that gate must be broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak english oh gate i'm standing here no stories you are, you are mocking yourself gates you must open you must open you didn't open for my father look at what he said him and his wife that nobody ever married legally i'm sure he made up his mind in the name of jesus i must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church when he was saying it the evil force he said let's see what will happen i did it for your father and your mother let me tell you something sacrifice is a covenant when you make up your mind to sacrifice it's like entering a covenant with god gather unto me my saints 50 verse 5 psalms they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice number three diligence involves resilience and tenacity now this is where i want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight please sit down everybody say resilience everybody say tenacity come hold me try to resist me as i'm moving this is how life is no destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land no sir there are not only giants in the gate the giant starts from egypt they will pursue you it's not just the giants on the promised land there are giants where you are going there are forces that will stop you so you are to hold me again you are trying to move forward and these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you it takes faith you will fail many times and you say satan i will wear you by my consistency whoever told you that just because god spoke to you you will succeed at first there is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person believers this is where we miss it 
the average christian when he fails once he will bring all kinds of jargons around and excuse and say you see this this and that. and christians we are very good at making people to stop rising the moment you do something you you god told you you are going to take worship to the nations your first album you bought it by yourself so i won't disgrace myself like this again sorry mr man that means you are not ready to get to the nations life rewards tenacity you put the first album it doesn't work you say i know i didn't get anything right but at least it gave me exposure let's go to write the second song the first one i just composed nonsense the second one i'm not just going to involve the holy spirit alone i will involve a music director so both the holy spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it are we together and now by the time you balance it your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism a day will come you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time whoever told you champions become champions from day one don't you know that success is overcoming many failures you never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving god is speaking to someone already man of god just because you started ministry and nobody's patronizing your grace just because you started ministry every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never never come for their conference again just because the first sermon you made a mistake you forgot the scripture because of tension anointing will not drive tension like that it takes experience to drive tension you will need to do this thing many times ramble on the stage more than once twice and then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself you can articulate do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back especially if they are frowning at you you crack a joke nobody laughs you forget the scripture no amount of prayer will take that thing away it's a track record you must create so it's not a spiritual problem he said it's just the 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 challenge you face on your road to greatness you don't go back and say oh god but i fasted now what evil spirit and no evil spirit entered you consistency consistency a day will come you will build confidence you will be able to look at people and preach is god speaking to us say in the name of jesus I will wear failure until I succeed the word wear there doesn't mean to put it on it means to wear it if my expression is not correct find your own the idea is frustrate failure till you succeed look let me tell you failure can be tired I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say I'm tired of this guy go pass and the gate opens and you walk gallantly i can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised i remember praying for somebody years ago they took me to pray for someone on wheelchair i think i've shared it in maybe 2012 or 13. i went full of the holy ghost those days you fasted and prayed for everything even if they said lead praise and worship I prayed for I, I took out time if you see the level of revelation I shared and yet when the time came to pray all in the final analysis I prayed I laid hands and I know the man had faith because faith comes by hearing that guy gave me all his attention I knew his spirit was in what I was saying let me give you a little testimony as we come let's laugh a little you see this guy here i love it jimmy let me tell you this when i started teaching them how to get people filled with the holy ghost and the principles of impartation something happened one day i left a jimmy and one lady he was to get her filled with the holy ghost you see when you see him talk now you are flying from your chair it's a track record 
I remember Jimmy talking with the lady in you know he's very intelligent he shared every revelation when he finished he now tried the lady was tired she said I'm, I'm tired this thing I mean it's so it pained him and then I, I can't remember the story exactly I think he called on me and I came and I mean in less than one minute that lady was and we were going home and Jimmy was gloomy he just said but ah, that at least if she fell down he knew he would have helped her fate i remember comforting him and said don't worry do you know why i'm taking out time to act this drama so that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you amateurism is allowed in the school of success every professional was once a student are you hearing what i'm saying don't be ashamed of being a student just make sure you continue so when you go for the meeting and just like apostle taught you your blood is hot from SOM graduation. You received fire here and you just organized a meeting. And in the name of Jesus, you waited for word of knowledge. You were surprised. Nothing happened. The crusade, you prayed, said, I sense the anointing here. And the person who fell was there. And you just, everybody is looking at your error. And as soon as they shared the grace, you went back and said, Kai, of course, God will always leave himself with a witness. But you go back feeling, Lord, Abba, if I was wrong, couldn't you have even just done it? And then we can settle it later. God says, no, pass through it. It's a track record. The day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening, that day people look at you and say, how did you start? You say, my brother, I didn't start with a blind eye opening. I started with finishing a service like funeral <laughs> because nothing happened prophesy to someone say pay the price say pay the price honorably <laughs> hallelujah ask every doctor here when they were students the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh ask every lecturer here when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students he didn't smile at some of the things abi pastor alpha you can't look at some of them and say this thing is hard yet today you are the one teaching it hallelujah so you stand today and declare in the name of the lord and someone is blessed you are learning the principles of finance and favor you get up with that zeal and go and start a business you start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read and you eat your popcorn alone nobody comes you just say it's an evil spirit no sir look let me tell you this if you learn this tonight you will not be ashamed of your pain again the next time things go wrong it's not always demonic sometimes you just say lord i thank you look at the apostles think how many times they were embarrassed do you know what it means to be mentored by apostle jesus this is Jesus we are talking about, the apostle of our faith. Having mentored some guys full of grace and truth. And then they went to pray for an epileptic patient. Mentored directly by Jesus, not John, not Moses. And they laid hands on that guy. In the name of Jesus. And the guy was not healed. The people would have beat them there to kill them if Jesus didn't come on time. But a time came, hallelujah. Peter when Peter is in a room they line sick people not for a crusade Peter is about to pass and his shadow mastery they call it mastery a realm and a dimension had come did you know once upon a time in my life I would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing no I will lay hands then you will fall so if I want five of you to receive any impartation I will patiently follow I didn't have the luxury of just making a statement where who, who dash monkey banana but you ask the devil in the pit of hell ask him he knows that you stand and make one pronouncement and open the two lift gates over men's destinies it's not just an impartation it's a track record are we together now listen tonight i want you to know that failure is not the end 
is a pathway to success this is the level where many of you are now that's why i'm explaining to you you are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening lord come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed and you are already getting angry you are already getting frustrated father i thought apostle said that if we finish dancing i've danced and danced and danced i put my prayer request i danced through the night it happened to me too don't think it just manifested let me tell you something the future you are trying to enter a large part of it by god's grace have entered i can tell you what to expect it will do you like a dream the day the day the legal claims of your training is over you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say god tell me it's a joke what is this what is this see a day will come you will look at your life and not find any scar and you are saying where did it go to and god says enjoy the blessings of your endurance when you see someone going to nda you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level tamawan yes but by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade he stands with honor the fearful weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today they can send him to my duguri and he says where is boko haram i'm ready to face them some of what you are going through God gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together. There is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage. Sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you. So God makes you strong by making you stare at your fear until you become friends. Your fear will no longer run away from you. Is it not the rent? You stand with the landlord. You stand with the policeman and finally you will learn that police does not kill landlord does not kill you no longer fear then the miracle comes and god will say it's not that i could not supply it i wanted to build your heart so that you are strong notice that every time you fail if you use it well it can impart faith in your heart this is something until you are in the school of the spirit it will never make sense hallelujah you can turn your fears to your miracle man of god the fact that you gave a word of knowledge oh i'm seeing pastor james on you he say no my name is pastor alpha uh, your your wife you married judith say no sir if you are not if you are not serious we will drive you here my wife is called annie you do you you have five sons no sir we have two two i'm seeing a girl no sir i have a boy and you turn back and say god if you didn't send me why embarrass me i can go back to i can use my accounting can't what is it a bank i can't go and work in a bank and god says you are a prophet to the nations let me tell you do you know while you are help him oh my god you see that do you know that while you are complaining god never talks to you about that issue he gives you another assignment he now says all right that lady go and meet her stand before her before i'll tell you what to say say mm -mm. god what is her name first say no so go and stand and you now say young lady no i'm not this kind of guys if you think i'm saying no 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 i know you are somebody's wife god just sent me so you yeah, talk fast already the, your your hearing is hazy by her shout listen he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation and say the lord said i should speak over this nation no matter who writes an article writing nonsense you have been immune there is a vaccination you have received all these people that cry over little persecution you were not trained well in the school of the spirit is god speaking to us oh god is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire and god says so you're fifty thousand and he said lord please I, I, is he you confirm it in a dream and you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him you even see yourself giving it you ask god to confirm every other thing you won't you will have a close heaven but confirm this one at once it will come and you keep giving like a fool until one day someone advises you and say look i know that you know this destiny we take it easily and god says listen to me and one day in one year when the rewarder of man ah 
I will never forget the first time in my life I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit it was during our second crusade I remember going to minister in a church that was the first time I would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing like I mentioned your name and you run out I said what is this I've never seen this the signs don't go before the signs don't go with they follow you listen many of us believers let me teach you you are in a season right now where your failure does not mean god is not speaking are you hearing what i'm saying please listen very carefully the fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you the fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you the fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic it's a track record go through it and see what you will make out of your life you pray for the first person he's not healed say lord while i'm learning what i did wrong who will i pray for again and god will say there is a cancer patient stage four in shika i say lord this is too much don't embarrass me like that and God says well it's up to you you can choose to disobey me when you look at that cancer patient even you by yourself you you'll be afraid what did you come to do here I I, I came to pray God sent me now I was and it's oh yeah pray let's see as soon as you pray on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry to you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life is no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will pass somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how god builds this man that you see my goodness i can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message i preached that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient take the risk you will make mistakes not you may you will but don't allow it dampen you you have to believe in your destiny enough to know apostle look at what i'm doing my life is empty god where are you uh -uh. Uh -uh. you may think that you had a revelation that this guy is your husband this girl is your husband you go and meet her and say sorry i'm engaged and you go back and say god but you spoke to me he says no problem you are learning how to hear you are learning spiritual precision a day will come you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of god upon the earth and when they look at you remember remember brothers and sisters little samuel too had a problem when he was hearing god the man whose word never fell to the ground a day came he said is it god or not god eli i'm not sure the bible captures the story of his learning but now look at samuel a man like a god upon the earth another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home what changed a track record of consistency are you ready to pray diligence diligence 
to everything that has happened an unbending resilience lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me i will continue writing songs lord they may not place a demand on my grace but i will continue i will give my best to it i will pay the price brothers and sisters i guarantee you this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to blast in the tongues. pray in the spirit for a few minutes Listen, Moses was ordained and anointed to be a deliverer. He didn't know how to do it. He killed an Egyptian because he was not strategic. God took him. God did not take away the assignment. God showed him how he would do it. It will be by a rod, not a knife. 
Moses you are called but you are using the wrong tools some of you you are called but the tools you are using is why you are failing you are called into business but the tools you are using you are called into ministry but how you were mentored is why things are not working the information given to you it is true that you are a deliverer you are called into the prophetic but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination you were called into wealth and abundance but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism lord correct my strategy lift your voice and pray correct my strategy something is wrong not with the vision not with the assignment the strategy may be wrong lord correct my strategy there is a way i'm doing ministry that's why i'm not getting result it's not the call it's the strategy pray this prayer lord correct my prayer strategy correct my bible study strategy Correct my leadership strategy. Correct my strategy. The assignment is correct, but the approach is wrong. Lord, I'm missing something. I know I'm missing something. Please pray tonight. Why is my church not growing? Why is my ministry not growing? Lord, I don't doubt the call, but I doubt the strategy. Correct the strategy. Listen. Listen. Please look up, everyone. Hear me. Tonight's meeting is very powerful for many of you you don't need to correct the vision you don't need to correct the assignment you are right but the strategy is what is making the result to not come the business you are in is correct but the strategy the ministry is correct but the strategy you were not supposed to have a church it was an evangelical outfit you went to open a church now nobody is bringing money for cheers let me tell you you are not free Till the pattern is given to you the pattern is the strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was the strategy go around Jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle Lord reveal the strategy for my result for my result result in ministry result in my spiritual life lift your voice and pray Reveal the strategy. Reveal the strategy. Shapakato kate parakatos. Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes. Where is my strategy? Not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry how do i finance my business lord i'm about to get married lord i'm married with three children what is the strategy lift up your voice and pray show me oh god every financial exploit comes with a solid strategy your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never...
never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please pray, Koinonia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it. The river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the I think the, the, the priests, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the jordan parted when it was time for jesus the strategy was not to part the water you would die there waiting for water to part whereas the strategy has changed the fact that god is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's the is not the one doing it give us this day my strategy give me this day lord the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred i've exhausted it what is the strategy from hundred to one thousand what is the strategy lord the strategy for my finances as a bachelor as a spinster i received it but now i'm married with three children what is the updated strategy for my daily bread Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? And I looked at him, I said, my brother, you must stay with God, not just to understand the call. Many of us, once you get the call, you just stand up and start running. No, the strategy is your advantage in any battle. Ask any military man. They call Operation ABC. That ABC is the strategy for the victory. If they say Operation this, the military people know that this is the formula we are using for the takeover strategy when we started i remember when god came and told me said son the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service it's a strategy you will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any result because it is a strategy every strategy has an anointing on it you see us gather prayer requests here and i pray on it for Bishop Oyedeko, his strategy is the power of the spoken word. You may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking. But the strategy is that he uses the creative word, power of the word. Or a robot, his strategy was to lay hands. He didn't just speak. If there were 1,000 people, or a robot will lay hands one by one. But if he touches you, be sure you are standing up. Strategy. For Benny Hinn is to worship very sensitive annoying worship sometimes he can tell everybody hush and you are saying what is this i remember once upon a time they had a program with archbishop benson idahosa and he was worshiping worshiping and one time idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming and idahosa just started shouting and that's how people started getting healed because the strategies are different william branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there. William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing. Let the people be patient. And then at a point, he will just say, the angel has come. Word of knowledge. He will start moving in a strange way. And people attacked him. He said, that's the blueprint that was given. Every man of God, if he sits down and he's honest with you, he will tell you the strategy. 
there is how i know the power of god is ready to move i can't teach you i can teach you generically but there is a strategy it's like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of god i cry to god i say lord what is the financial strategy for this ministry because this ministry will grow and now the the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue most churches raise finances a major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media and now god is saying give the messages free don't sell anything imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that he would have brought and now it has gone lord you have to reveal it ah when he comes to you my god when my god comes to you he will tell you something that does not make sense but you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy you will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say lord i fear you hallelujah yes there is a strategy there is a way we do ministry here it's a strategy that god gave for dr lukoya is prayer he will raise prayer points and you will pray and while you are praying in that prayer the power of god is moving and touching people there are many people for papa he will stand and in the calmness of his voice make a prophetic declaration and people will come for reverend dr Uma Okpai, he will raise a song and while he's dancing and singing people are rising up don't copy strategies receive strategies Listen, I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogance to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? There are many proud people, and I say this with every sincerity of heart. There are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results. Love everybody, but don't give your ears to people who don't have results. You will become like them. No man can give what he doesn't have. hallelujah can we pray one last prayer point i want you to challenge the spirit of laziness lukewarmness listen it says i would that thou were neither hot i mean either hot nor cold i would i desire you are not diligent and you are not completely lazy you are just somewhere in between if you are very hot i can make you hotter if you are cold i can know you are cold and help you but you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere you are going to pray and cry that laziness especially the spirit many of us sincerely i love you and i don't mean to hurt or embarrass you but many of us are extremely lazy lazy to a surprising degree especially for a young man lord destroy laziness from my life lift your voice and pray financial laziness spiritual laziness intellectual laziness take it away from my life take it away from my life take it away from my life are you praying Diligence to study, diligence to be valuable. Hallelujah.
please permit me to add for us one more request we are going to pray concerning this issue of value I'm sure that by God's grace I'll speak on it again for workers but we are going to pray listen 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 if you are not valuable koinonia listen to me those outside those online listen to me no matter how you convince yourself if you want to reign in today's world what you have must be exceptional if everybody has what you have there is no space for you did you hear what i said if everybody has this is not about competition if what you have can be given by another person cheaper or freer you are in trouble you must trust god to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique no devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you i told you that a man of god was praying for me one time and he laid hands on my head and said father create a problem in his region that only he will be able to solve i thought I, in my mind i felt so bad because i said Kai, no i'm somebody who is for the body i don't like this thing of one person outshining others what kind of prayer is this but when i understood value then i prayed that prayer and i said in the name of the lord jesus christ create something oh god for me i thought it was a joke there are many preachers but there is one joshua selman the same way there are many people but there is one hme there is one when we want to hear the voice of sam amaka cannot sing like sam sam cannot sing like amaka if we want to hear the strings elijah and the music director don't play the same thing listen when god makes you exceptionally valuable sit back and watch the power of the sabbath work in your life it will be like a jam the way men will run and come to you i tell you this thing i'm not lying to you take away your wrong mindset listen to me you want to prosper and rise in today's world is more than a job you need to master value in a way and manner and it will shut the mouth of darkness i look at my life today if you listen to what i'm teaching you my brothers and my sisters you will sit back and wonder and say what is this life is it will look unfair don't think it's happening just because he's called joshua selman it's not true it's a law can you pray that one prayer as we're ending i give you two three minutes find a corner and cry to god lord i'm not unique enough i'm grateful for what you have made me but i know there's something that you can put upon my life that every time someone says pastor femi every time someone says pastor alpha i thank god for everybody but that uniqueness pray grant me the grace to be valuable hallelujah listen your value is what brands you is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not pastor lawrence is so good in the graphics when you needed to to write the names of school of ministry students as anointed as i am you didn't come to meet me because with respect to that, I'm totally not valuable. It's not an insult, it's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. You won't come because you don't consider me that valuable. Nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship. Does it mean I cannot sing? But I'm not that valuable. There are many options. Why should you be picked when there are easy options to you?
I vowed and I told God I will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say Mr. Man thank you this your honorarium go and the next time they discuss when they bring Joshua and say no please no no way I will never do that so I pay the price in the word I pay the price in prayer I pay the price to know what to do and what not to do that's the key and it will bring you to to suck the breast of kings they will give you access to their treasures treasures that they would not even give their relatives and you will stand and wonder and say life can be this easy koinonia hear me if no one is looking for you it's because you are not valuable enough don't be angry take this truly if you are not valuable enough nobody will look for you are we together yes there are people i've met in my life it's amazing how as soon as i met them and discern their value those who used to provide that area of value they are, the doors of my favor towards them close immediately there are people like that are we together there are people who are doing one thing or the other for me is dangerous if you are easily replaceable i say it again it is dangerous when you become easily replaceable that means in this life you will not amount to much the consequence is that you will be angry you will be resentful you will hate everyone that's why i'm an advocate for mastery you have to trust god for grace to know whatever he's granted you grace to do and know it well if it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness do it if it means reorienting your mind even against what you study do it whatever price it takes to stand you out paul a man approved of god you stand out not in a competitive way but in a unique way that brands you that's why i don't have enemies i don't insult anybody i don't fight anybody i'm more than grateful to be me i don't think it would have happened that way if i were not this valuable if i were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the spirit of god that this ministry enjoys probably i would have joined the many people insulting others do you know when you have results you don't hate it's true it's true there's no need for it i live a very happy and peaceful life that's why I love the body of Christ. I honor everyone. Resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you. But when you stand in a position on part of, look at Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is friends with him. He can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy because we are talking of Benny Hinn here. By the privilege of the grace of God, Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord. Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland. You can preach everything when Kenneth Copeland comes. He is Kenneth Copeland. God's system for faith. Insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity. So rather than fighting, you trust God and say, Lord, lift me. The popular hymn says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. Huh? By faith on heaven's table land. It says, a higher plane than I found. Lord, set my feet on higher ground. That's the prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. I have spoken to your people. Addressing what may be the gap between them and their results. And Lord, I have spoken by your spirit as you have inspired me. I ask tonight in the name of Jesus that these words will be spirit and life to the listeners. Lord, as they subscribe to the laws of diligence, I pray that their results will come speedily. In the name of Jesus, that those who laugh at you now, their tongues will cleave to the roof of their teeth because they will see the wonder working power of god in your life i pray for someone here who may be discouraged and is wondering lord i've done my best i've done my best i speak a word of hope for you right now 
and I declare that you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus that which you are doing by the Spirit will work for you it may take time but as surely as the Sun arises after a night time your result will come I pray for the grace to be strategic in your approach that you will not dissipate energy randomly and I pray for the fortitude to be sacrificial and that with pleasure in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you that in the name of Jesus the grace and the ability to be tenacious and unbending the resolve to stay through may that grace be supplied you now in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands to Jesus very quickly Lord we thank you there's someone here saying apostle I need Jesus we're in a hurry but it's no license for me to leave this place without a genuine encounter with Jesus another person is saying apostle I love God but the way my life is right now I think that I really need a restoration you may be inside you may be outside wherever you are please I like you even if it's just one of you be bold be courageous take that step and walk towards me right now I want to pray for you koinonia appreciate them someone is coming God bless you someone is coming is this the best you can do koinonia there are people outside if you are coming join them quickly God bless you for your courage God bless you for your courage keep clapping koinonia Jesus is bringing them Jesus is bringing them those coming from outside please clear the way for them very quickly join quickly I want to pray now hallelujah thank you so much those of you in front I love you and I appreciate you while we wait for those outside to quickly join them if there are any I want you to raise your right hand say after me very sincerely say Lord Jesus say Lord Jesus please join them join them my sister God bless you those online you can join them to say Lord Jesus I love you say it again I love you and I believe that you are the son of God tonight Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.